Hey everybody, it's Elena Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, coming at you to talk about June of uh, 2024. And thanks again to the guys at um, Know Thyself Podcast. Thank you, thank you for everything. Um, <clears throat> okay, so today is the 7th of June. Yesterday we just had a new moon, and which is always nice, you know, it's when the sun and moon are conjunct. So it's nice and refreshing energy, whatever sign it's in. Um, but what's kind of cool this month is that <clears throat> Venus is going to be traveling with the sun. I mean, Venus is always fairly close to the sun, right? Because it's close to the earth. So Neptune, I mean, excuse me, the sun, Mercury, and Venus are kind of close together. Generally, they don't stray more than, well, two signs apart. I mean, that's, you know, anyways, it's mathematically impossible for them to get too far apart. But Venus is basically conjuncting, being the same as, the sun all through June and also then Mercury is going to get in on it so it's like sun Mercury Venus for a lot of the month but especially that sun and Venus Venus is the more following the sun more closely and <clears throat> so Venus is a planet of love and it's also money it's also self-esteem um, and there's something about Venus that's a lot about commitment if you think about the planet Venus it has a lot of, um, what do they call that, greenhouse effect. So light and heat go in under the clouds and they can't come out. So it's this idea of, mm, I'm hugging you, I'm loving and connecting, you know. So the sun has a lot to do with our own personal identity. And so that can be a lot of lessons this month about self-love, especially when it's in Gemini like it is now, like speaking to yourself kindly, thinking kind thoughts. Um, being sweet to yourself and committing to actions that are self-loving. So the other thing that's going to happen is Mars goes into Taurus and well, Mars is already in Aries and as it's in Aries, it's, um, you know, taking actions that are vital and like this kind of newly new inspiration, like, yeah, but Mars has been in Aries for a little bit. But as it goes into Taurus, and then later in the month when planets go into Cancer, the, uh, the Sun, the Mercury, and the Venus, Mars, that planet of action, is going to make a sextile for most of the month. And Mars is about taking action, that Venus is about the commitments, and the Sun, like, to yourself, to your authentic self. So even starting out, the beginning of June when Mars really isn't in on it, it's like what kind of actions are most important to you that are more about who you really are. And, you know, um, I had a friend that used to have a bumper sticker that said, Earth without art is eh, you know, E-H. And so Venus can be a lot about these extra things that make life worth living, whether it's art, uh, free time, um, you know, relaxing, dancing, music, um, you know, fashion, um, and, and it doesn't have to be a waste of time. It's things that make you feel vital and alive. But that might also be that you like, you know, running or playing a sport or something, but Venus is what makes your life sweet. And it's, maybe it's non-essential, but it is to your soul. So your life isn't eh, like, you know? So this idea of art and beauty, whatever that is for you, and it can be relationships, but especially relationships with yourself. You know, I, I love to watch RuPaul's Drag Race, and he says at the end, you know, if you don't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen? And that sun and Venus is about committing to love yourself, taking the actions that are loving, whether it's, you know, monitoring your spending or allow yourself to spend and treat yourself to things. Um, how are you eating? Or is your eating too strict? And you need to like treat yourself, you know? And making that commitment to steady actions. So this new moon we just had, sun, moon, together in Gemini with Venus. It can also be like writing out some goals, writing out some promises to yourself, and a promise to be kind, to be aware of when you're thinking negative or putting yourself down or this stuff. So as we progress through the month and then Mars moves into Taurus and the other planets move into Cancer, the Sun, Mercury, and Venus, it's like, wow, you're really um, like ready to go, you know? So 
I really like that. I've been kind of looking at how Venus is going to do this. I'm like, hmm, this is pretty cool, you know? Um, and the idea, like that RuPaul quote, when you do feel that you are putting yourself first without, not like neglecting other people, there's just the sense that the love is rooted in you and then it radiates out. And then that positive radiation, <laughs> radiance, magnetizes people in. And the other thing can be, you know, healthy people. The Gemini component is, um, ma again, making a list about what properties or qualities you see in healthy relationship, not only with yourself, like I eat well and I do this and I let myself, you know, go to an art gallery or a baseball game or something that is fun and vibrant for you. But how are you treated in relationship? What kind of people do you want in your life? And, um, this kind of a thing. So it's like kind of like making these contracts and promises that even expand out into the relationship, like who you want to be around. And um, it's a great time to make social plans because that can be a thing is you feel like, oh, I got all these friends, but it's like, are you really seeing people or is it just on the phone or a quick FaceTime or something? But about getting together with people if you can is really great with all this Venus, which hopefully is easy in the summertime, right? Um, so the other thing to talk about is, um, oh, also when we have the full moon, I wanted to say, um, which is, oop, I didn't write the day. The new moon is the 6th and the full moon is the 22nd. Um, you know, Venus is still there with the sun. And, um, and again, Mercury getting in on it. And even though it's a full moon that can be wild, it's more about really a celebrational idea with Venus there. The only thing to kind of watch out for is to make sure that you're not having unrealistic fantasies about people. And a part of that, if you're writing out your goals about how you treat yourself and how you want to be treated in a relationship, how you want to be relating to others, hopefully that helps that you don't feel extreme with the full moon. The other thing going on is that Neptune um, so planets, there's 30 degrees of each sign. So you start out with zero is the first degree, and then 29 is the final degree. So Neptune, which is connected with Pisces, and Neptune and Pisces are both about idealism and dreams, and it can be ungrounded fantasies, or it could be, you know, wishing things into reality that you feel makes your life fulfilling. So it's like, actually, we could say that Neptune is like the highest octave of Venus, but it has that unrealistic quality sometimes or over idealizing. So Neptune is moving to 29 degrees of Pisces this month and it's going to stop and turn around the first few days of July and then kind of be there in July as well. So that's one of the things to look at. I'm just going to take some water here. Um, is to make sure you're not over idealizing things or holding yourself to unrealistic standards. Um, and that you use that instead about compassion, having self-compassion um, and having compassion for this idea that you want to, because one of the things you got to watch out for is kind of this codependent, giving people too many chances when you have Neptune and then with it being in Pisces, which is Neptune's planet, doing Neptune's sign, it can double that, like really saying I'm not, giving too many chances. I want to have boundaries because Neptune doesn't have boundaries. That's why it's like, oh, I'm meditating and I'm feeling so bliss. But we need Saturn to have boundaries, right? But Neptune's like Ooh, floating all over the place. Ironically or helpfully, Saturn is also slowing down to go retrograde, which it will like the 28th, 29th of June. And it's also in Pisces, but it helps to stabilize. So that's one of the great things about relationships is to say, you know, really making sure you're not asking too much of a partner, like, you know, they're going to be absolutely perfect for me or something. It's like, oh, well, let's ground this in reality. But also that you don't say, like, you know, if a person treats you lousy, like, well, they're going to just have a shift. And you have to look at the reality. Is this person shifting? Do they want to shift? Is this good for me? Am I good for them? Blah, blah, blah. So there's, like, kind of checks and balances with that. Um, so... And that Neptune, it's interesting when Neptune slows down, there's a lot of great opportunities for meditation, for dreams, noting your dreams, um, and pursuing anything that's artistic for you. 
like I said, dance and music and art and things like that. And you don't have to be like the best person who's going to be, you know, on a stage or, you know, an art gallery kind of a thing, but it's, it's letting kind of like this creative energy flow through you. So even more strong than the sun and Venus together, that Neptune at the final degree of Pisces is really strong for that and having that be a part of your spirituality um, as well as, you know, yoga and meditation and all that. So uh, let's see what else. I think that might be it, which is kind of quick to this month. Um, let me just give another look here. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just doing that. Okay. Well, um, the only thing I'd say is that as the sun and then, yeah, Mercury getting involved mid-June while still in Gemini and then the Venus there is that it's also, those planets will also square Saturn before they work with the helpful sextile to Mars. And so again, that the Saturn gives um, you know, some sort of parameters. It kind of grounds it. But at the same time, just watch out for being overly critical of people. Like there's, and, and that might be part of the thing is you're saying, well, here's the ideal of what I want to have in my life. But then like, oh, that person doesn't live up to my ideal, or I don't live up to my own ideal, or, you know, I want to make these affirmations and yeah, I don't lose weight because I said I'm going to lose weight or whatever it is. So there's something about um, making sure you don't come down too harsh on yourself. And that's kind of like the second week of June. So I could see something like you're, yeah, I'm feeling this way. And it's like, that ah, didn't happen fast enough or, um, kind of abandoning it before you really get rooted into the practice. And there's um, a concept about, um, they call it the second force that, and it's almost like the idea of a detox reaction. Like you take a supplement or something and it's supposed to make you feel energy, but what it's going to do, it speeds up your metabolism and then say, Oh, look at all this stuff in the trash. We got to get this, move the metabolism so we can throw stuff in the trash. And then you have a detox reaction and feel kind of lousy and like, wow, this stuff made me feel lousy instead of, ah, it's cleansing me. So then I can feel good. So that can kind of be that feeling of Saturn is that you say, oh, I want all these ideals and this is my goals that I want to attain. And it's like, eh, my life doesn't measure up. It's like, okay, you know, this is where I see, wow, my, I'm resisting feeling the good coming towards me. Or I see old resentments and doing affirmations about my relationship. And then I see old resentments come up and I need to forget about, release, forgive, you know, um, address them and release them. So don't see it as like, well, this was a stupid thing to do. It's like, all right, there's kind of this old stuff cleansed out. And then the energy can really, really flow, especially when you get in the second half of the month. And those planets move into Cancer and Mars moves into Taurus. And it makes that nice angle to say, I'm what I'm doing and saying is really aligning. At first, it could seem kind of like, why am I doing this? Or this is stupid when the Saturn makes the square. But think about it as like, aha, these are the things that have been blocking me from really feeling self-love or following through on positive action or really feeling love for my partner because I have this old resentment or something or some weird hang up about whatever it is. And to be able to um, smooth those pieces out and, or take things. If you're thinking of a, like a river flowing, you're getting these brambles out there. Wow. There's a lot of mess here as this water starts to move down. And then whew, after you get the junk out of the river, it starts to flow. So, oops, knocked my lamp over a little bit. So, okay. So if you want to get a session with me, um, you can always call me, text me 248-583-1663. Um, it's hard on YouTube. If you send me a note on YouTube, sometimes most of the time I don't see it. Um, or go to alunamichaels.com and you could send there. I have my email address too, I think. Maybe you too. But, um, well, I hope you have a great, wonderful month feeling love and receiving love and having healthy boundaries and being patient with yourself and other people with that. Um, okay, and bye-bye for now.